Right, here we are again in ArtRage. Now, I've reduced the file size a little bit because I think I'm pushing it with the size it was. I'm now down to 3,000 pixels wide. This is going to be a half-page illustration. So that that effectively is, is full-page size. So I've got plenty of room to play with if I at some point want to make prints or if it gets put to another use, I've got some room to manoeuvre. I don't like to work one-to-one -one. if I can help it. I like to, to work a little bit larger. So here I am. I'm noodling away. Let's talk about what I'm doing. I'm back in Art Rage. This is pretty much what I would con consider the underpainting done. I'm going to start on the actual painting, the overpainting. Is that what we call it? So I've got my oil brush. Lots of pressure, lots of loading. Decent size. And you can see, let me zoom right in so you can see in the redu at the reduced resolution of this video business. Artrage does these lovely, lovely oily strokes. A very thick impasto that I really like. Brings a lot of texture to the painting. And of course, you can use the, the direction of the brush marks can describe space wonderfully well. Now, I'm putting some on this Sort of path area here but I want to be careful because I don't want the path to be too textured so look I'll use this roller tool just to flatten out that impasto a little bit I can always come back in later where I want real heavy impasto is the bits like down here where I want it rocky and broken and tusky grass now when you're dealing with something like that, it doesn't suit the way I work or, or my mindset to try and paint in every individual tuft of grass. Some artists do, and they do very well at it, but not me. I want to just kind of generally show what's going on. It's a, an impressionistic kind of thing. You'll notice I don't really go to my color picker very much. Uh, you know the, the color palette over here I use the alt key which lets me pick a color from underneath and I want to just that's what my underpainting is for in a, in a great many ways I can just pick up the underlying colors and use those with this thick thick paint I've had a lot of practice doing this kind of terrain landscape painting so I can fairly whiz through just starting to build up the, the textures and shapes that I want to represent this patch of ground excuse me sliding my chair in there we go and I'll just keep on painting like this all around the canvas just to show you here I'm, I'm sticking in one spot as sort of demonstration but I will actually work all over the shop This is set as thick and as heavy as Art Rage will do it just now. I might take off a little bit of pressure because that is awfully thick. That's better. I can you get the feel that you're gliding a little bit more with a bit less pressure in your setting. This lets me work a little bit faster. Have to be careful as well. I find if there's too much. Uh, pressure setting that, that makes it feel slower I press harder on my pen and when you're when you're working for at least eight hours in the day and you're pressing artificially pressing harder than you need to you get wrist problems and that's just no fun being freelance there's no sick pay there's no time off if you get sore wrists until it's really really bad so you have to plan in advance and make sure you look after yourself because ain't nobody else looking after me. There we go. And I shall just continue this process. I'll probably just shut up now and paint unless anything springs to mind. So I'll record a little bit of this, but not too much. You get the idea. I'll tell you what, isn't painting just uh, a kind of magical process as I was painting this kind of path here and I don't know if you guys can see it 
but I really get the feeling of that slightly dipped path, you know, the way the light's hitting it and the, the different colors there. And I just love creating that as I go and you slowly feel the thing coming to life. Great, love it. Certainly what I get out of bed in the morning for. I feel very blessed to be able to do this kind of business as a, as a living. Mind you, it's quite funny. You know, I am grateful. I certainly count my blessings. But good grief, as any um, budding artist watching this will know, you work for it. It doesn't come easy having this as your job. You've got to do a lot of tough things, make a lot of sacrifices to get to get to a point where you're doing it as a day job. Without wanting to sound too miserable, there are far, far more serious and uh, far, far worse things to have to do than work your way up as a freelance artist but it isn't easy and it doesn't fall in your lap you know i know many many artist friends who really hate it when people say things like you're so talented because that makes it sound like it's just something you do and you were born able to do true to a point but there's a lot of hard work as well i mean certainly running the business side of it and keeping on honing your skills to a point where you can earn enough money to be to be doing this full time without the need for another day job is not the most straightforward prospect. But hey, I've enjoyed getting here and I enjoy being where I'm at. There's always a certain dissatisfaction. You always want to do better. Certainly working on this gig, doing the research, looking at what other, other artists far greater than I have produced for, for Middle Earth. And that's a very, very sobering thought and you just hope if you keep working honestly you'll catch up a little bit of ground to where they are. Angus McBride is my big inspiration. Um, I think he's a fantastic artist that, that just kind of effortless grace I guess his work has always impresses me and his handling of light and so on is incredible. And of course I mean you know uh, dealing with this project, John Howe is, is an incredible artist. It's been really, really lovely to get to see all his concept work and so on and, and work from it. It's been a real privilege. In some ways it frightens me a bit. And this is why I'm making these recordings. This could be the best uh, job I ever do. <laughs> I'm not ready to peak yet. <laughs> I should shut up really and paint, shouldn't I? Right, well, I might leave you guys here and I'll get on and do the, do the donkey work of uh, painting this Bjorning settlement. And uh, we'll come back to it in a bit when it's a bit further on and we're moving on to a different kind of process. But for now, I've pretty much got to cover the whole canvas. <laughs> so, bye-bye for now.